And that video was done by the man who is here with us in the studio, singer, guitarist. He's been part of Adekule Gold's band, um, The 79th Element. He's traveled around the world. And today he's here with us in our studio to share his journey, his music, and his latest video, Asiko. Time is on our side, so we're speaking with Femme. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Well, it's always, so a, always a pleasure Thank to you. have Thank you. Thank you. Always good to be here. So we know you play the guitar. We know mm -hmm. that you sing. But mm -hmm. which did you start out first? It was, I think it was the guitar. Uh, the singing part came because my mom loves to sing. She's still in the choir. And I grew up with her singing in the house. So unconsciously, I had that talent. But I didn't explore. I just wanted to play instruments. But then, you know, I realized that when I'm in the studio producing for other artists, they want to do their backups, and it doesn't really sound, you know, that sonic quality, they don't have it sometimes. So I just get into the booth myself, and I just sing. And I'm like, ah, boy, OK, you know, you're, you're, you're on fire. But you know, I, I wanted to put the guitar thing out first before you know, start, I started so singing. So if, if you would be asked, at what age exactly did you know that, OK, I had gotten a hand on this thing of playing the guitar? 16. Oh, really? That early? Yeah. Because I, st I started playing at 14. I was early bloomer. started playing at 14. By 16, I knew that, OK, I think we have, we have, we have something here. And uh, by 18, I knew that was what I was going to do for the rest of my life. So yeah. So <laughs> you are part of the 79th Element, yes. Adekule Gold's yes. band. I Let's am. talk about your friendship or your relationship with Adekule Gold. Yesterday, we had Mologo on the show. <laughs> and he shared with us his journey and how he met Adekule, Adekule and ended up doing three songs with him. Yeah. But you've played with Adekule Gold around the world. How did you meet him? I met Adekunle Gold. Oh, no, let me say it like this: We've known each other since we were babies, literally, because our parents were, you know, we are family friends, and we grew up in the same area. So his mom would send him to my house, and my mom would send me to a shop. So it was like that, and I knew the sisters and everybody, you know, and uh, it was like that for a while. But then they had to move away from the area at the point, so we lost contact until. One of our mom's closest friends you know, saw my CD and saw a CD. It was just coming out then, Shade and all. Ah, I'm all, ah, ah. <laughs> Kule, hey. ah, Femi, hey. I'm all Kule. ah, no, 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 no. And, you know, we were already, we were already connected, you know, because the, the day he dropped Oriente, I went to his house. He was still staying somewhere in the mainland. <laughs> and I went to talk to him, and he realized that some of the songs that he listened to to carve out the sound, I actually had something to do with it, either produced or played guitar on. So it was really fascinating. He said, Femi, you have to be on my album. And I'm like, yeah, sure. Voila. So after I did my, my concert last year, and um, he wanted to do a show in London, so he told me that, yo, let's go to London together. Because the guitarist had to leave the band. I wasn't the guitarist in Seven Night Element. So it wasn't, it wasn't planned. It was just, he called me up like, yo, Afa, come through, I beg, you know. I'm like, yeah, you're my brother now. No, voila. So I, I wasn't even thinking about it like, you know, it was an obligation. It was like, my brother needed me, and I'm, I'm there. So we went to London, and I, I, I felt it was supposed to just be for a show. But I ended up just being part of the band. And it was like, yo, OK. So for a while, last, you know, let me just stay here and uh, enjoy the music. And I'm so grateful to God. He did the first album, did the second album. We are very, very good friends. And uh, he was at my wedding, you know. And he was, he's a great guy, honestly. He's a great guy. And I'm, I'm happy to, you know, work with him, yeah. With the way you talk about him, we can imagine your relationship. Ah, we are very close, though. We used to You know, people know him as the superstar. You know, it's, it's, it's something else to us. He's a very down to earth guy. Very, oh, very down brilliant. Yeah. You mentioned that when you met Adekunle Gold and you both had, had a conversation, you talked about the fact that some of the songs that he listened to get his inspiration from mm. were some of the songs that you had had something to do with. Yeah. So, let us through some of the songs you've worked on. Produced okay, I used like to that. do a lot of gospel back in the day. So, there's this song by Kenny Kore called Sucre on the Noah album, it was produced by me. And some other songs of that album, about two other songs. And so he didn't know I was the one that was responsible for that song. He didn't just feel like, ah, who's this guitarist? Who's this guy? He didn't know that. He just thought I was just the guitarist. He didn't know I was the producer of the, of the record at the time. And when he found out, he was just, you know, like this guy, yeah, Lubado. 
I'm all we got to talk together. I'm like, yeah, sure. And the only funny thing was when he was making the gold album, yeah, I've never said this anywhere. Himself and Fuse, they listened to my first album a lot. In fact, I didn't listen to my like I, I really give him kudos. He did his research and he listened to the album, they listened to the album and you know, they kind of just got their own sound too, you know. You know, everything is related music, you know. So yeah, it was it was really cool and also being in the studio with everybody trying to work on, on the records and you know. So right now I'm looking forward to the future. So aside Sadikule and um, Ken Kore, mm -hmm. who else have you worked ah, with? Ah, plenty of like Okay, that you know? <laughs> <laughs> or that you don't know. Uh, uh, okay, Let's I'll, 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 uh, okay, let me start from some people in Nigeria. Okay, obviously, Don Jazzy and all the Maven crews, everybody. I've recorded with everybody you know, separately. I've, I've recorded with uh, the point in Yaya. I've recorded well, a lot of Nigerian musicians, let me just put it. But I've had the pleasure of working with Yusun Do in Senegal. I did a track that featured ah. Angel Angeliki Joe. Akon, Fali Pupa, um, Isondu also uh, on that track. I, you know, met some of my idols, you know, uh, my people that I look up to when it comes to music already. You know, Norma Brown is in my Ayo video. He was in Nigeria. That's like a huge influence because the Grammy Award winning guitarist, met Norma Brown, met Gary Clark Jr. this year. I think I want to ask Austin. my producer, please bring pen so that I can sign my autograph. <laughs> I think I've been looking at you with small eyes. <laughs> I have to really increase the way I wish. Met Gary Clark Jr. this year, met Leona Lueke also, who happens to be a guitarist for Herbie Hancock. Uh, and they, they tour around the world. Uh, a lot of people, I, I think 10. Okay, if if I should say ten of my idols, I've met six. Okay. You know, I, well, I've seen them perform live. You know, so like I I think you've I, done well for yourself. I want to believe and so. And we are very proud of you. Looking <laughs> forward to the time very soon enough. Some other young people would say Yo, Camila is my idol if they're not already saying that as well. They, some people say that and I think it's too humbling. So when I'm um, like me, I'm just a regular Joe, just a regular guy that just has this. You know this talent, but I, I'm so grateful to God for, for it, though. Indeed, you, know? you are. Let's yeah. talk about your career as a producer. Yeah. When last did you produce a song? What's happening to your career as a producer? Because we know you more as a guitarist, yeah. as a singer, mm -hmm. but not as much as a producer. Okay, so a lot of people don't know this, but every record that has been dropped by Femile has been produced by Femile. So I know that you know she shared every song, including Asiko, I have produced, and most of the time plays seventy percent of the instruments on those records. So, like, behind the scenes, I'm doing it. Like, I'm, you know, really, really producing and putting stuff together. But that part of my life, you know, wasn't out there. But right now, I'm trying to put it out because uh, I just released an EP called The I Life EP, uh, which I produced. And um, it's just guitar-based music. So people are wondering, okay, who made this music? And I say, it's familiar. Like, are you serious? Did so you, you sing produce? over the... I did sing. Just guitar. Well, just guitars and, you know, you know, amazing music, you know, underneath. So... Yeah, that's, you know, that's me producing. Also, I'm working on my second album, which will be out next year. <laughs> I, I can't <laughs> wait for it. Because first album dropped in 2015. I, I, I'm not one of those artists that drops albums every year because you, you have to actually take your time and then tell proper stories. I, I want to tell a story of being, you know, things have changed now. I'm a husband, uh -huh. you know, and things like that. You I was have waiting to, for that. You, have to, you have to talk about things like that, you know. You cannot just be putting... And I'm, I'm talking about some very, very serious stuff that... You know, it's affecting us right now. So I'm very excited about it. Yeah. Okay, so you just mentioned marriage. How's marriage been? Beautiful. I know, I know your wife, anytime I'm raising him and in, I'm like, <laughs> you guys are like the exemplary art power couple. I'm sorry. <laughs> Actually, they're art inclined. So you're yeah. a guitarist, you're mm -hmm. a producer, you're mm -hmm. a singer, mm -hmm. your wife is an artist, she paints. She's a broadcaster, yeah, broadcaster the voice of well. artists. Yeah, amazing. So we've been collaborating for a while now. I remember my, my, my concert last year, I needed someone to do like the voiceover for her. And then she was like, okay, I'll do it. You know? And then she went into the studio and then she said, get out. I don't want you to hear me record. <laughs> and then she recorded and I'm like, this person cannot be my wife that I want to marry. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this is like when you booked somebody, <laughs> and uh, so in fact, the, the if you check out the LIPP, the artwork is actually uh, a, a canvas painted by her. So the LIPP was done. The art cover was by my wife. You know. So yeah, we we've been collaborating a whole lot. And of course, when I when I do my music, when I produce my music, the first person that will hear it is my wife. 
you know, before it goes out. If it's not good, it's not going anywhere. She has ha, have, there, has there been or have there been times when she told you, man, I'm not feeling this. Song, yeah, I'm yeah, not feeling sure. This. We are ah, very, very open with each other. There's no baby in. In fact, let me tell you, the fine pictures that you see on my Instagram, it's not because I, I I'm so dope like that. No, it's my wife. She just check it, babe. This is not good enough. You have to look for something else. Oh, this picture is not good enough. Oh, yeah. So she takes care of. She's like my brand manager. Oh, oh our brand manager. <laughs> and I look out for her too. So yeah. Oh, but marriage is beautiful. Yeah. And, and it's hearing things like this, <laughs> I, I, I'm actually glad that you say this because mm. we find that we're in a generation that glorifies the troubles in marriage True. much more than the good times. Now, this is not to say that marriage is a walk in the park. Mm -hmm. We understand that there are challenges that come of with course. marriage. However, we always oftentimes get to see all the negative news and negative news and the bad, bad mm -hmm. stories about marriage and how, you know, people are getting married and getting divorced under a year or two mm -hmm. years. I'm sure you heard a lot of these stories as well before oh, you got a lot, married. Did they lot. affect you and how exactly? It, yes. it, so, it didn't affect me because, first of all, uh, I'm a very selfless person, also, in, and we had counselling. So I've been having marriage counseling since like 2009. My godmother is a certified marriage counselor. So she has been working on the boys. We were like about 10, 11 boys. We all married themselves from a person. So like everybody's like scattered around the world. So she made sure that she taught us a lot of things. And also counseling from church and from my mentors. So I knew going to marriage. Marriage is about two selfless people just dying to self every day. So it's not about you. It's about the other person. So imagine looking out for someone and someone looking out for you. Then there's equilibrium at the end of the day. So I, I think the reason why a lot of marriages break, you know, of course, celebrities and all that, is because a lot of people just have that ego. Like, a me, 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 sorry to speak your word. But no, no, me, 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 my name is Jimmy, you know. It shouldn't be about you all the time. It should be about the other person. If you look out for the other person, you have, you know, a fantastic marriage. And of course, you have God. People don't put that into consideration. A lot of times, just mm, you think you can just wing it. There's nothing you can win. The Bible says a threefold cord can never easily be broken. So mm, if you pray, have to take us to church, bro. Oh, mm. <laughs> and you, oh, like, like, I see what you did there. <laughs> Speaking about um, marriage as well, before yeah. we leave this marriage conversation, but it's okay. It's okay. I really, really like you know. It's okay. I, like, I can talk about it all day. I know. Oh, yes. So <laughs> let's let's look at you know the fact that. You married somebody in the industry. Yeah. Many people in the entertainment industry oftentimes say, you know, I don't want to marry someone in the industry. Mm. Me inclusive. I have mm -hmm. said that. But you know, as you, you, your eyes start to see things in life, I'm starting to say, you know what? I just want to marry. You never you. know. You never can tell. Yeah. You know. So, um, did you have such fears as well, marrying an entertainment a person in the industry like you? You know, well? the funny thing is that I, I never kind of like put myself in a box with who is going to be or who is not going to be. You know, I just knew that my my life was going to be awesome my marriage was going to be fantastic because I, I grew up in a model home. My dad and my mom, I've not seen love like that before, you know. So I grew up with a lot of love. So I knew I had a lot of love to give, you know. So I, I didn't have fears, whether I was someone in the industry or not, you know. People say, oh, you walk towards it. Ah, it's not that deep. It's deep, but it's not that deep at the same time. I think a lot of people just put a lot of effort into what is not. You know, like, for example, I want to get married. People concentrate on the wedding. They forget that there's a marriage. When we're getting married, we forgot the wedding. We were planning it all, but we're working on the marriage. You know, what happens the day after, the day after that, you know? It's just going to be the two of us, you know? And then you get into the actual reality of, oh, I'm actually staying with someone. I know a lot of people want their personal space. Then you have to share that personal space with someone. So if you don't get into that place in Don't your press head. your toothpaste from the middle. Hey, press hey, it from the bottom. Press it. Why do you hang your socks there? This soap is too small. You have to treat it away. Oh, no, no, no. We you can see more than it. in the sponge. You see very, very mundane things that you know, cause a lot of problems. And have you experienced that? No, no problem. We press the toothpaste in my ass hey, from anywhere. <laughs> and we're OK. You know, there's no, I, I, I feel like people just need to work on themselves more before you know, they plunge themselves. Marriage is not for uh, small children. You have to be matured and be ready, you know, to say, I have the space, I'm ready to give it up for the other person to come in. So, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, I so think that you people need to, you know, give me some, you some, know. Some little, let, let's, let's move Incentive. on from this marriage. <laughs> this marriage, you know, it's a, it's a very beautiful story yeah. and I'm really glad. I actually look forward to having a, a session with you and in oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, of the I'm, same I, set. I would, I would love, would love to be totally, there. I totally, totally you know. love that. Yeah. Now let's come back to your music. You oh, yes. wrote a new song. You have a new song out, a new video, Asiko. Yeah, a new video. Tell us about it. So, Asiko, I wrote Asiko last year. 
And I remember I was, I think I, I was just very sick. Uh, but my brother was still staying with me at the time. I just picked up the guitar and started singing. And uh, so I got the song. The song was written in like uh, 10 minutes, you know. But it, it, it just came out of a place of not staying in a place. And not saying, ah, I have this thing now. Let me do it tomorrow. Like, if you have something to do now, do it now. Uh, I was, you know, there was a time in my life where my parents had farms. Uh, they had a farm, actually, in Lagos here. And we go to the farm, and my mom would sing, and, you know, and we would do what we need to do at the time. So, like, it's, it's just about time, and people just embracing the fact that they need to do what they need to do now. I think that's a very fantastic way to wrap up the show, because we started the show speaking about Tosin Bokno and the fact that she passed away at the age of 37. Mm -hmm. Too short, but a very well-lived life. Yeah. So at the end of the day, mm -hmm. we want people to live life with such urgency, oh, yes. remembering that, you know, you, tomorrow is not really guaranteed anybody. Mm -hmm. But thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you Fred. for having me. To enjoy more of these our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.